Hello, hello. How is everyone? Doing good? Assalamu alaikum. How are you? How is uh, Ahmed Tamir, Iyad, Abdurrahman? Another Abdurrahman? <laughs> Adham, Ahmed. How's it going? Ala or Ala? <laughs> Amna, how, is, how are you? Arwa, how's it going? Bilal, Dana, Darin, Doha, Doha, how are you? <laughs> Ihab, how are you? Ines, Iyad, Farah, are you Farah Yusuf? Nirvana Husni, thank you for having the camera on. That's amazing. Habiba Ahmed, how are you? Habiba is from the other group. She's just attending today for fun. She loves chemistry so much. Hamza, Hanan, Hanya, how are you? How's it going? Hatim, Huda, Jana, Judy, Lujain, Maram, how are you? Maria, Maryam, Marwan, Maya, Muhammad, Mr. Magid, Nasr, Nilisha, how do you say your name? Did I say it correctly? Nuruddin, how are you? Omar. Kusai, oh my God, Kusai, open the camera. Kusai is one of my favorite students from last year. His results will be out in like, what, three, four days. And we're very, very, very excited. Rimes, how are you, Rimes? Raghda, Rukaya, Rumaisa, Sahar, Saja, Sama, Shahid, Shahinda, Shirin, how are you? Wad, very beautiful name. Yasin, Yusuf, Ziad, Zainab, and Marwa. I hope I uh, called everyone here. I think I got it all. <laughs> okay, so let me share my screen. What we're going to do today is let me share, yep, share my screen here. And here are my slides. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're going to go through some very quick orientation. If you have any questions, please let me know. You are welcome to open your mic and let me know what questions you have. And uh, just to let you know, this session is being recorded. It will be provided for you and it will be also posted on YouTube. Uh, Ms. Dina, you can uh, share my YouTube channel's link just so people can follow up and... Um, and watch the recorded session if they want it after the session. Of course, it's going to be provided a couple of hours after that. All right. So welcome, everyone. This is the orientation session. And this is for Cambridge students who are taking the exam in June 2023. Is everyone taking their exam June 2023? Right? Okay. I think someone has their hand raised. Omar, go ahead. Open your mic. Tell me. What's your question? I cannot hear you yet. Omar? Dereen. Dereen has her hands on, uh, up. Dereen, you have a question? I cannot hear you. Are you talking? <laughs> I couldn't hear you. Okay. Well, let's... No, let's I was just saying yes. that I was going to take the exam on me and that's it. May, June, 2023, right? Yes, that's why awesome. I was just raising my hands. I have no questions. Awesome. Oh, yes, yes, you were just saying yes. Awesome, okay, that's perfect. All right, so what I want to start with is uh, I want my mouse to work. How do I make my mouse work? Uh, maybe escape. Okay. Okay. All right. So here's our agenda. What we're going to talk about today is I'm going to quickly uh, tell you more about myself. We're going to talk about prior results, which are 2021, because 2022 is going to be available on the 18th this th Thursday. We're going to talk about Cambridge papers. Now, I talk a little bit fast because a lot of you already know this information. We're going to talk about our team, my rules, my systems. I only have two rules, so please remember them. Very, very important. We're going to talk about the schedule, the plan, some testimonials from last year 
how to enroll. We want to set some goals together, and then we're going to talk about chapter one. I'm going to explain the beginning of chapter one. So stay tuned and pay attention. All right. So um, just to give you a little bit of a, um, a little bit about myself. So I am an IGCSE graduate. I graduated a long time ago. It was 1999. I started teaching IGCSE chemistry in 2004. At the time, it was face to face. I have students come to my house, and then I started teaching chemistry online in 2019. Uh, I loved chemistry so much, so I went to pharmacy school. I went to Faculty of Pharmacy, Cairo University. Graduated in 2004, and because I loved pharmacy so much, I went to Purdue. University. University, got several degrees from Purdue, got my PharmD in 2008, master's 2018, and PhD in 2020. Right now, I'm an assistant professor at the University of Wyoming, and I am an adjunct professor at the at Purdue University. Now, I, I am um, I get certificates of participation in workshops with Cambridge, and this helps teachers get familiar with the curriculum, get familiar with uh, the grading and all that fun stuff. The other thing I just wanted to mention very quickly is that I love chemistry so much that I have authored several books, and these books are on Amazon.com and um, Audible.com. Now, the one thing I want to talk about is what really got me into chemistry. What is it about chemistry that really got me interested and intrigued about it that I became a chemistry teacher and a pharmacy professor? It was, I don't know, some 20 some years ago, I was in your place, guys, like doing what you're doing right now. I was in my first chem chemistry class. It was not online, it was face to face. And it was with my favorite, favorite teacher. He's a chemistry teacher. He, uh, his name is Dr. Sajan. And in the first class, he explained a chemical, a chemistry experiment. And this experiment was done by a scientist called Rutherford. Now, who wants to become a scientist? Raise your hand, open your mic, say something. Who wants to become a scientist? Judy says some people cannot join because the meeting is full. Yeah, I didn't anticipate 100 people to attend. I'm sorry, Judy. It is recorded, though. Okay, I'm going to give you the link. You can give it to whoever you want, okay? It's free. It's recorded. It's going to be on YouTube. Iyad and Iyad and Dereen and Abdurrahman, they want to be scientists. Yasin wants to be a scientist. That's amazing. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. I'm so glad that um, a lot of you want to be scientists. So that's exactly what my, how I felt in that first chemistry class. I was so fascinated by this experiment. So briefly, I'm going to talk about this experiment later in, in chapter three, but briefly what Rutherford wanted to discover is the structure of the atom. How does the atom look like? What is it exactly that's inside the atom? People didn't know that the nucleus is a very, very small part of the atom. So he did this experiment where he got a really thin sheet of gold, really, really thin. And he passed uh, alpha rays through it. And what he found is that those alpha rays went straight through the gold sheet, which means that most of the atom is empty space. Now, as soon as I heard this experiment, I was like really fascinated with what Rutherford did and with this experiment. So at the time, I, I just got so interested in chemistry. So I became, you know, a chemistry teacher and a pharmacy professor and I went to faculty of pharmacy. So that was the beginning of uh, my career. It was one class with an amazing teacher who I think he changed my whole life. Bless his heart. I am forever grateful for him. So what about last year's results? Now, again, the result for 2022 is not out yet. It will be out in three, four days. It will be out on the 18th on Thursday. So we are all waiting um, impatiently. We are very, very impatient. But the 2021, um, I had uh, 30 some students, 26 of them achieved A star, five of them got A and one got B. So these were amazing results. And I'll show you uh, what, is, what does it take to get a, an A star? I will show you that. So Cambridge papers. Now, uh, who is familiar with the papers, the exams that you have to take for Cambridge? Thank you again for having your camera. That's amazing. Okay. That's awesome. Abdullah, Darin, Hania, Omar, Rukaya, Abdurrahman, you guys are familiar with the paper. So I'm going to go through it very, very quickly. Rimes has her camera on. That's amazing. Rimes is Rami's cousin. And Rami's is one of my favorite students. I love him so much. Thank you for being here and thank you for having the camera on. So, um, 
Okay, what what is it talking about? Okay, the Cambridge papers. So Cambridge papers, there are three exams that you will take at the end of the year. And it's going to be approximately between mid-June to early, sorry, mid-May to early June. Uh, the three papers are paper two, paper four, paper six. So paper two is multiple choice. You get a question and then you get four possible answers. Only one of them is correct. And you answer on a separate sheet. Now I will show you how this sheet looks like in our classes. Do not worry about it. There are 40 questions. Each question is what, worth one point. However, the examiner will multiply those points times one and a half. So it's basically uh, worth 60 points. You get 45 minutes total and paper two is worth 30% of your total mark. Paper two is probably uh, the harder one among the three. Paper four is a theory paper. You get a question, you get three, four lines, three, four marks, and you answer on the same paper. It's worth 80 points, but the examiner, again, they multiply it by one and a quarter, and it's basically worth 100 marks. You get an hour and 50 minutes, and it's worth 50% of your uh, total marks. Paper six is actually the easiest paper. A lot of people complain about paper six. However, once you get to know what's the structure of paper six, it becomes really, really easy. And it's very easy to actually score 40 out of 40. And you get 60 marks and it's worth 20%. Does anybody have any questions? I'd like to pose for a second here. Does anybody have any questions about the papers? Please just go ahead and unmute and um, let me know what your questions are. Any questions? Let me check the chat here. Alaikum salam. Hello, hello. Everyone is saying hello on the chat. Awesome. Okay, I was just checking the chat. All right. Um, miss? Yes. Why do they multiply the grades for paper two and paper four by 1.25 and 1.5? That's a very good question because they want paper two to be worth 30%. And for it to be worth for 30%, uh, it needs to be out of 60 marks from the 200 and not out of uh, 40 marks. So the total here is 200 marks. So they wanted the paper two to be worth 60 instead of 200. And instead of giving you 60 questions, which would be a lot, they only give you 40 questions and then they multiply it by a factor. Very good okay. question. Anything else? No other questions. You know, Nirvana Hosni, I met four people in my life with my name. <laughs> All right. Looks like there's no other questions. So I'm going to go ahead and go to you the next to slide. About, go ahead. I to ask about the, are we going to train, like get trained for these exam papers? Absolutely. Like, We're going to get a lot for of the exam. Practice. A lot of practice, lots and lots and lots of practice. Yes. Now, if you, one of those high achievers who like, you know, works really hard and really diligently, I have a lot of work for you. Now I do have a minimum, so I'm going to give you a minimum of work, which you can just stick to the minimum, or you can do the maximum of work, which is actually a lot of work. I have past papers from 2002 until 2022, 20 years worth of questions. So, and I removed everything that is, you know, deleted from the syllabus. So you're not doing anything that is not in the syllabus. So yes, plenty, plenty, plenty of opportunity to, uh, to practice. So don't worry about it. Now, the one thing I want to talk about is what does it take to get an A star? Guess what? It's really easy to get an A star in chemistry or level Cambridge, because all you got to do is get 136 out of 200. I mean, you can lose uh, 64 points to get an A star because eight and nine are both considered A star. So it's really easy to get an A star in chemistry. Um, uh, Cambridge, uh, they, the, the way they mark their exam is very good. And I will also uh, train you. I have a slide here that I, uh, I hid because it's not related to students, but basically uh, there's this thing called examiner report, which tells teachers what is it that examiners find in um, in their corrections when they mark questions. So again, the A star is very easy. All you got to do is just listen to my directions, do exactly what I tell you to do, and the A star will be a piece of cake. Now, in regards to our team, we have an amazing team. I'm very proud of them. 
Uh, Miss Dina is probably the person you're going to contact a lot. She's going to remind you of the homework. If you are late, she's going to make sure that you are on track. And uh, she's also responsible for the website. So if you have any questions about the website, please contact Miss Dina. Coach Marlene is the person you want to talk to and text if you're not feeling good. So if you're nervous, if you're anxious, if the exam is coming up, if, if you're having problems with time management, Miss Marlene or Coach Marlene is the person to uh, get in touch with. Now, uh, the, uh, the chemistry teachers, we have four chemistry teachers on board. Mr. Mustafa, he ha he has, uh, he's been teaching chemistry since 2014, so six years of experience. Um, no, actually, 2014 is eight years of experience. Uh, Mr. Sirinivas has been teaching chemistry since 2002. Mr. Danielle has been teaching chemistry since 2014. And Mr. Ahmed, Mr. Ahmed is um, is a student in medical college, Cairo University, and he scored in his O-level chemistry 197 out of 200. So he is an amazing, successful student, and he's an a high achiever of Cambridge biology. So he is such a pleasure to work with. So um, we have plenty of support. We have a lot of people that you can text, and you can text me personally. So, um, you know, you guys are in good hands. All right, the next thing I want to talk about is the rules. So there's only two rules that you guys have to remember. And the first rule is be on time. Join the class on time. Like you saw today, I started right on the moment. I started 9.30 exactly. I'm sorry, it was 9.30 my time, 5.30 Egypt. So I start exactly on time and I start teaching on time. So make sure you join exactly on time. And the second rule is to submit the homework and the quiz on time. You get two days to submit the homework and the quiz, two full days. You can solve the homework anytime in those two days. So our class is today, Monday. You have to submit your uh, answers, your responses by Wednesday. So you have the rest of today's evening. You have the whole Tuesday and you have the whole Wednesday. That's plenty of, uh, plenty of time to finish the homework. So these are my two rules. You guys remember the two rules? Yeah. All, all good. Okay. Omar said, yes. Awesome. Love the thumbs up. Love everybody that who is raising hand and saying, yes, I will remember the two rules. All right. Now, a few things here. Thank you, Marwan. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You have wonderful. The few other things that I just want to also mention is that attendance is really important. I want to see you guys here. I want to be able to ask you questions. I want to be able to listen to your questions. I want you to have the opportunity to stop me and say, hey, I want this to be repeated or I want more examples or, you know, I don't understand this. Like, I want this opportunity to be available. And, it, and this opportunity is only available if you are here live. However, if any anything god forbid happens if you are packing if you are traveling if you are in the airplane if your internet is not behaving then all the sessions are recorded and it will be provided and it will be on your website it will be on your dashboard you can watch them anytime until the end of the year you have access to them all the time the other thing i want to mention is please have a working microphone and a webcam like it's really nice to see Nirvana Hosni. It's really nice to see Omar. It's really nice to see who else has their camera on. It's really nice to see Remez. It's very good to see Iyad and Ale. Ale or Ale? Ale, right? <laughs> all right. So it's very nice to see you guys. Um, I hope that you guys all have your camera on because it really helps me know you guys better. All right. Uh, next point here. After the class, you will find everything on the website. In fact, you will find everything on the website even before the class. So let me show you the website. All right. So here is the website. This is uh no. So when you go to igccvideos.com, what I want you to do is click on dashboard. When you click on dashboard, you will see all the lessons. You will see 1.1, which is today's lesson. You will see 1.2, 1.3, 2.1, and so on. So when you click on 1.1, that's what you're going to see. So on the left side, you're going to see several things. The first one is just meet your instructor. This is just information about me. I mean, you can go ahead and read it, you know, um, this is, yeah, this is just just um, uh, something, more information about myself. The, the next thing you will find is the Zoom session. So today's Zoom session was right here. You can click here and join today's session. 
for 1.2, what you're going to do is you're going to click right here when it's time to join, which our next class is Thursday at 5.30 Cairo. When it's five before 5.30 Cairo, we open the class at 5 o'clock. You're going to join using this button. And then the next thing you're going to find is pre-recorded videos. So pre-recorded videos are videos that I have recorded without students. It was not on Zoom. It was just me and the iPad. And the reason is I can teach the whole lesson. The two hour lesson is in a very short time because there's no interaction, nothing. And you can, uh, you know, quickly uh, listen to the class in just 18 minutes. These are pre-recorded videos. It's, it's a very good way to summarize the lesson and it's a very good way to recap the lesson. Now there's the English version. There's also the Arabic version and they're exactly the same. So you just listen to whatever suits you. Some people like, uh, is Enes here? Enes, I don't see him. Oh, maybe he couldn't join because of the number of people. So um, Enes's brother, uh, Basim, used to love the Arabic videos. He he felt like it, it was just, I don't know. He just loved it so much. So you have the Arabic version, you have the English version. Watch them both. Watch just one, totally up to you. Next is the homework. So the homework tab or the assignments tab, these sheets is your homework. Now, don't freak out. It's not very much. Now, this sheet is just two pages. This sheet is also two pages. I think this one is only two to three pages. So it's not that much, but this is your homework. All right. So the minimum is the worksheet in 2019-2021. Starting from 2018 until 2002 is, you know, I'd love to see you guys do it, okay? But what is really, really important is the worksheet and the 2019-2021, which are basically past papers that are related to today's lesson. And lastly, you will find the answers. So you will find the answers right here, which you can print or just save on your computer. And this way you can check your answers while you are solving your homework. Now we do correct all the homework. We're going to look at it. Um, however, some students would like to actually check their work. Like they don't want to, you know, solve 20 pages, 30 pages, and then find out that they've been doing it all wrong. So I'd love you guys to also have the answers. So all the answers are right here. And this is the worksheet. It's just a couple of pages. This is the uh, this is the classified, which are questions from past papers. So all the answers are here. Now, the other thing on the answer sheet, which I believe is going to be extremely helpful, is the QR code. So next to each answer, there's going to be a QR code that you scan, you can scan with your phone or device, and then you're going to watch a video. I'm going to, like, I teach this question in a short video. Some videos are as short as one minute, and some videos are like six minutes. So you're going to watch this video. On It's going to take you to YouTube, watch the video for each question. So each question has a QR code that you can scan. All right, any questions at this point? Thank you, Shahinda, for having your camera. That's amazing. Any questions at all? It's uh, it's www.igccvideos.com. Uh, Ms. Dina, can you post the link to the website, the link to enroll in eight classes in the website? All right, so same thing with 1.2. Once you go to 1.2, you're going to find the same exact thing, the link to the live session, pre-recorded videos in English and Arabic, your assignments, and the answers. Sounds good. All clear. All right. Where are the notes? My notes are approximately 400 pages. However, I'm going to give you some good news. I have a summary and my summary is 12 pages, but I'm going to give you the summary in April because I don't want you guys to cut corners. All right. So you guys are going to print these two parts. The notes are two parts and they're approximately, again, almost 400 pages. And again, do not worry about the amount of the notes. It's big because there are pictures, there are a lot of explanation, but it's concise. Do not worry. There's no information outside of our syllabus. All right. All good. You guys, are, uh, you guys know where to find the homework? Everyone knows where to find the homework? Awesome. Everyone knows where to find the Zoom link right here? Awesome. So 1.2, which is August 18th, is going to be right here. For August 22nd, is going to be in 1.3 and so on. Okay, I believe that everyone is um, knows where to find stuff.
Okay, so the homework again is worksheets and classified, which is basically questions that I gathered from IGCC past papers. And we're going to have a quiz every week or every couple of weeks. And it's, it's really short. So I picked the hardest, the most tricky questions, 10 questions for each quiz. Uh, I just demonstrated the website, so we're good with that. Now, the way to submit your homework, how do you submit your homework? You're going to take a screenshot or uh, you, if you do your homework digitally, you're going to just answer on the PDF. The PDF is not secure. You can edit it and then send it to Ms. Dina. Or if you are uh, an old fashioned person like myself, you're going to print the homework. You're going to answer on it and then take photos, take pictures with your phone or whatever device uh, and uh, collect them all in one PDF document and send it to Ms. Dina. Make sure you write your name on the homework, okay? So here's Ms. Dina's phone number. This is her WhatsApp phone number. You're going to send all the homework to her private WhatsApp. She's going to keep track of who is doing the homework and what exactly they submit it because we're going to tell your parents about your performance. Um, and then what else? Yeah, and then we will correct your homework and, and give you feedback. All right, sounds good. All right, so this is the way you submit your homework. Now we are going to give reports every chapter to your parent. So your parent will hear from me. I will let them know how things are going. And uh, lastly, which is very important, you guys can text me or text the tutors on our team anytime on the WhatsApp. All right, sounds good? Okay, next is the schedule. So. As you guys know, the main sessions are Monday and Thursday, okay? Just like this one. This one is Monday, and then I'm going to see you again on Thursday. These are the main sessions, and it's heavily focused on the explanation of the syllabus itself. I may be able to solve a few questions, but the focus is on the explanation and how exams come and how you will be asked about things. So the other thing that I also offer is office hours. So my office hours is Wednesday at 7 p.m. Cairo time. And what I do in this office hour is solve lots and lots and lots of questions. If you bring questions to me, I will solve them. It's going to be my priority. If you guys don't bring questions to me, I will ask you. I have an agenda. I have certain questions that I would like to discuss every Wednesday. Sounds good, everyone? All right. All the other 11, like you see here Sunday, there's four office hours, Tuesday, two office hours, Friday, two, and Saturday, three office hours. These office hours are also available. They're optional, however, highly encouraged. What I want you guys to do is sign up for one of those 11. So I'm going to send you, uh, and actually many of you have already filled that form. I'm going to send you a link to a form and you're going to pick one of those 11 days and times. Sounds good? So you're going to pick one. This way, these sessions have very few students. And what we're going to do is we're going to do an oral quiz. So we're going to ask each of you to answer certain questions. We want to make sure that you understand everything. And if you have questions, you can also bring them into those office hours. Sound good, everyone? All good? No questions? Wonderful. Okay. Now, the plan... So I have a session plan. So each session, I have a very specific topic that I want to cover. And today we're going to cover states of matter. Next time we're going to cover kinetic theory, heating and cooling curve, purity. It's a, it's a big lesson. We have a lot to discuss. And then, and so on. Like, you know, August 22nd, we're going to discuss 1.3. August 25th, we're going to discuss 2.1 and so on. Now, as you can see here on the right side, you guys are going to have quizzes every week or two so after each chapter i'm going to give you a quiz now there's a cumulative quiz as you can see here so the cumulative quiz is a quiz that covers everything else in the past and this way by the end of march when we finish the whole syllabus you guys know the whole syllabus like you haven't forgotten anything because like we do those cumulative quizzes all right sounds good okay now, uh, this is the remaining of the plan. You guys can, you know, look at it later when you watch the recording if you want. And uh, note here that we are going to have a week break by the end of December. And I would like you guys to use this week to um, uh, review the first half of the syllabus, chapters one to seven, because I'm going to have, look at this blue thing, a half syllabus mock exam. It's worth 100 points. And I would like you to um, score really good. So uh, let me make this bigger. Okay. Sounds good, everyone? All right. 
Now, we will be done with the whole syllabus March 30th. And then after that, I'm going to give you mock exams, two mock exams for each lesson. One mock exam is one that I have created myself. I have selected certain questions from past papers. And the other one is actually a real recent past paper. We will focus on 2022. And the mock exams, some of the mock exams cover certain chapters just to make you focused on certain things. And the other mock exams just cover the whole thing. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Lastly, um, we will have a break for Eid. And then the May and June schedule will actually not be Monday and Thursday. It's going to depend on the Cambridge timetable. And we will have uh, as many lessons as you guys want before paper four and before paper six and before paper two. And for those sessions, I have recorded a very short summary of everything that I really want you to know before paper four, before paper six and before paper two. And it's on the website. So all the access is on the website. All right. Any questions so far? Okay. So some people are saying how and where and when to pay. You can... Uh, uh, so Ms. Dina have uh, posted the link for enrollment. So the link for enrollment, this enrolls you in eight sessions. Miss, can you go to the previous page, please? Yep, here you go. Um, and what else? Yes, it's on the website. So Ms. Dina just posted the link to enrollment. Okay, so when you enroll, you get immediate access. You have access to the pre-recorded videos. You are, you're gonna see where the assignments are you're gonna see the Zoom link, okay? Zoom link is the most important, right? Because you wanna know how to join, all right? Okay, wonderful. All right, the other thing that I mentioned is that in April, we, where we are revising the syllabus, we're not gonna look at the notes anymore because they are 400 pages, okay? you At the time, you're gonna be very familiar with the notes, almost memorize all of it because you know, you're know you gonna look at it a lot, a lot. But the other thing that I'm gonna give you in April is a summary. So I'm gonna give you a one page summary for each chapter. So the whole chapter one is summarized in one page. The whole chapter 12, which is like, 50 pages is summarized in one page. So you guys will be only studying from those 12 pages for the 12 chapters. Sounds good. Are you guys excited? I've entered late. So did you explain some? No, Zena, I will explain in just a minute as soon as I'm done with the slides. So this is a quick orientation. The other thing I want to show you is the testimonials. I'm not going to read those. Those are very dear to my heart students from 2007 to the, between 2004 and 2007. Uh, and these were in person, so uh, I taught them face to face. The other students here online from the uh, last few years are over here. You can just read them anytime. I can provide you with the slides. Um, Miss, do we have to print the 400 pages? No. Rima, I want to ask a question. Do you like to study digitally? Do you want to study digitally or do you want to study from a paper? Now, if you're like me, I would like to have a physical paper. So I really suggest that you print uh, the notes, right? And if you don't, then that's okay. You will be given the PDF. You can download the PDF on your computer. You can study from them. Myself, I like to have the notes and I like to write things with my pencil and I like to highlight things with my yellow highlighter. So um, where do we find the notes so I can print them? Ied, when you go to 1.2, where is it? 1.2, it's over here. So as soon as you enroll, when you enroll in eight sessions, you will get access to 1.2, 1.3, 2.1, 2.2, and so on, eight sessions. And so the notes are over here, or you can ask Ms. Dina to send it to you on the WhatsApp. I prefer that you just print it from here, or you can send it to you. It doesn't matter. Rima says, I will try to print them. Awesome. Yes. All right. So uh, these are testimonials. You can just read them anytime. Any other questions, guys? No questions. All right, lastly, before the Q&A, um, so what you can do is you can just go to www.igccvideos.com, which will look like this, okay? It will look like this. And here is, here is the first eight sessions from 1.2 to 3. Point, now, 1.1 is free, of course, which is today. From 1.2 to 3.2. And then the next ones, which starts September 15th, is 3.3 .3 to 4.2, and then, and so on. Like, there are nine of those uh, bundles of eight sessions. Now, you don't have to enroll in any of these, because when you enroll in eight sessions, I will give you the worksheets, I will give you the videos, I will give you the classified. Everything will be included, so you don't have to worry about all the other things in the. So don't worry about classified, because you will be provided with those. Any questions?
All good. Okay, so Ms. Dina also posted the link to the form that you have to fill out to um, reserve your spot, like put your name, your phone number, your parents' name, your parents' phone number, your email, and we're going to need those to reach out to your parent and let them know how things are going. So here's the link to enrollment, which Ms. Dina put in the chat uh, several times. This enrolls you in the first eight sessions, which is until September 12th, and then after September 12th, Ms. Dina will send you the new link. And when you um, enroll, you get immediate access to everything you get immediate access to the zoom link you get access to the zoom recording which will be available the very next day at the most you will also have the pre-recorded videos in two languages you will have notes worksheets classified everything quiz answer so after each quiz i will post a video solution like explanation of the quiz uh in a video format all right uh any questions so far now, this is a good time for Q&A. Any questions? My school is teaching Oxford. Will the material be helpful for me? Yes, Omar, the material will be helpful. However, Oxford's uh, past papers are significantly different from Cambridge past papers. So this class, this class is actually for Cambridge students. All right. Good question, Omar. I'm in year nine, and I'd like to begin IGCC chemistry this year. Yes, you are welcome, Luigi. I bought your notes. Uh, and I'd like to ask, are they sufficient to study from or will you give us extra information during the sessions? Uh, no, this will be fine. The, the notes are pretty comprehensive. And from what I've heard and the, the, the feedback from people is that the notes were very, very helpful. Just to confirm, I have to go to the website every two weeks. You have to go to the website every two weeks. Why every two weeks? The website has all the videos. So you should be on the website every two days to study and watch videos and download. Oh, to pay is every four weeks. Okay, the payments are every four weeks, not every two weeks. Yes, Thomas, thank you. Good question. Anything else? Anything else? All right. Okay, yes, yeah, there's no, no questions. All right, Abdurrahman, any questions? Adham, welcome, Adham. Ahmed, Ahmed Tamer, Ahmed Sulaiman, Ahmed Muhammad, Ahmed Diyo, Akram, Ali. Where do I get the notes from? Zaina, you will find them in 1.2. It's it's a couple of documents. If you cannot find them, Ms. Dina will provide it for uh, all the students who enroll. That's fine. I'm a bit lost. What website are you talking about? Uh, Muhammad? This website, igccvideo.com. This is the first eight sessions which you enroll in. And when you enroll, you will have access to 1.2 where you can find the notes. Miss, do you have another session that starts in November? No, unfortunately, I'm sorry. <laughs> That's when I start. Uh, Miss, we won't have a textbook to study from. Just my notes. The 400 pages is more than enough. You do not need test textbooks. Nope. Uh, all right. Okay. Any other questions? Habiba doing well. Farah, Yed, Hania, how's it going? Habiba, Islam, Jana, all good. Judy, is there a WhatsApp group? Yes, Habiba, there is a WhatsApp group. If so, what's what number should I contact? Ms. Dina, can you put your phone number and my phone number, please? Lujain, how's it going? Luji, Mohammed Hisham, Mahmoud Hisham, sorry, Mahmoud, Maram, Marwan, Mohammed, Muhannad. Nasr. I'm pretty excited for the session. Me too, Omar. Yes. <laughs> uh, I am very excited too. All right. Everyone doing well. Nirvana Hosni, Rimas, Nurhan, all doing good. Nuruddin, Omar, Ryan. Miss, you give revision session. The revision will be April. Yes, Ines. Revision will be April. April, May, June, of course. Uh, is any, anyone else that's in grade 10 or is it only me? Should, everyone here should be in grade 10. <laughs> is anyone who is not in grade 10? This class, this course is for students who are taking the exam in June, 2023. So June, 2023, all right? All right, Ruqayya, how is everything? Do you have any questions? Sahar, Sama, Shahd, Wad, Yahya, Yasin, Yusuf, Zaid, Zaina, Zainab. No questions. Okay. All right. So um, what I want to discuss next is what goals do you guys have for this course? 
So Omar just said he's excited about the course. What goals do you have? What do you want to do? I'm in grade 11, but I take the same syllabus. Yes, Habiba. If you are taking the Cambridge exam in May 2023, then this is the course. But if you're taking it in 2024, then, I mean, it's fine. It's going to be a little bit early, which is good. That's that's totally fine. We actually have uh, a few people who are taking the exam in 2024. Uh, yeah, that's fine, Jenna. That's fine. Yes, grade 11 is perfect. I just want to pass aiming for A or B should be fine. Yeah, we can do an A star. It's very easy to do an A star, which is great. Like, yeah, I mean, I see ignore and reject in marking schemes. What is the difference? So reject means you will lose the mark. Ignore means you don't lose the mark. Uh, to explore more about the subject, Zena, that's a really good goal. That's good. Year 10, Nirvana Hosni, year 10. You are taking the exam in 2023, right? May, June. Yes. Awesome. Awesome. So any other goals? I've seen really good goals here. Super excited. I love your explanation already. Reem. Oh my God. Reem, thank you. Okay. Anything else? Any other goals? Well, what else do you want to learn? Remiss. What do you want to learn? What do you want to do this year? Dana, Iheb. I want to give, get an A star. Yes, that's amazing. And understand more about the subjects. Judy, yes, that's amazing too. Great goals. Shahinda, what else? All right. So um, what, what I have for you guys, like I have a kind of a... Uh, a goal for you guys that I have. How long is your sessions? All my sessions are two hours long. I try to finish five minutes early and I uh, give a 10 minute break in the middle. All right. Today's session, I hope to be a little shorter than two hours, but I mean, we'll see to improve my level in the subject. And then my Wednesday office hours, we actually stay until you guys are all done. So if it takes two hours, if it takes three, we, I once stayed for four hours. So it depends on your needs, guys. Like, I want to help you as much as I can. All right. So the other goal, the goal that I have for you is, of course, to get an A star or a, or a nine, which is a score, which is the highest score in Cambridge. So that is a goal for, for you guys that I have. The other goal is, of course, do everything we can to achieve the higher score. However, there are, other than grades, I have some bigger goals for you guys, for my students. And one of my goals is for you to really understand chemistry and love it. The other thing is I want you to enjoy and actually have fun. So uh, last year's group, they, they really had fun together. And, and we have developed a really nice community of students. So I would really would like to see you guys enjoying the course and not just studying, studying, studying. But I actually want you to enjoy the information. and. What I also would love to see is for you guys to get excited about future career options. So chemistry is going to open your eyes to a lot of things. You can understand more about your body. You can understand more about medicine. You can understand more about pharmacy. You can understand more about forensic medicine, for example. I mean, there's a lot of things that is related to chemistry. In fact, every single product that you see, even your phone, has to do something with chemistry. I mean, they make the glass, the screen with certain chemicals, certain materials. It's not just you know, haphazard materials. So everything in life is related to chemistry. So um, this, that's it with my um, soap. Yes, soap is actually made of chemicals. That's right. I really love chemistry since I was four. That's amazing, Ian. That's amazing. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start chapter one. We're going to cover 1.1, which is states of matter. I hope to have you guys interact with me and answer questions. I will give you homework, which you can find on the website, right? I mean, 1.1 is free. You can go ahead and go uh, download the assignments and, and do your homework. You have two days to submit it. So remember, Wednesday, we'd like to have all the homework uh, submitted from you. If you if you want to submit it tomorrow, that's fine. So tomorrow is fine or, or Wednesday at the most. Um, and then uh, how can I... Uh, how can I escape this? Okay, so I tomorrow we start the office hours. So tomorrow, Tuesday, there are a couple of office hours available, one at 5 p.m. and one at 7 p.m. And then I will see you guys Wednesday. All right, everything sounds good. All clear. Okay, now what I'm going to do is we're going to start chapter one, unless you guys have any questions about the course. Any questions about the course? Start broadcast. All right, so it's our first session, teachers, the presentation available on the website. I can provide it for you, Rima, no worries at all. And this, this whole thing will be recorded and available um, 
on YouTube? Shall we attend the course every day? Zina, no, just Monday and Thursday for explanation. Wednesday, if you are able to join, that would be wonderful. And all the other sessions, you pick one. Don't pick all 11. Otherwise, you're not going to have any time to do homework or to even study other subjects. I also want you to be successful in other subjects. So you pick one from the 11, Zina, just one from the 11. I mean, you can attend more if you want. Uh, and if your scores, if, you, if I don't like your scores, I will ask you to attend more. But uh, the goal is to, uh, do we pay extra money for office hours? No, Jenna, office hours are free. You only pay for Monday and Thursday. Everything else is free. Like it includes office hours, the website, uh, everything. Can you get the timetable page again? What do you mean time? Which timetable? Zaina, which timetable? Okay, well, I can I can show it to you at the end of the session. Just remind me, okay? Are all the videos free on YouTube or just this one? So my YouTube channel has maybe like 50 videos. Uh, it's not the course. It's not my lessons, but just, um, just videos. Welcome to uh, explore my YouTube channel. Ms. Dina, can you post my YouTube channel to everyone? Uh, thank you. I mean the days to attend the course. Monday and Thursday, 5.30 p.m. Cairo time. Wednesday is extra, 7 p.m. Cairo time, and all the other times are also available. There are 11 times available, and I will give you a form. All the times were Cairo time, yes. So add one hour if you're in Saudi Arabia, Kuwait, or Qatar, add two hours if in, you are in UAE. Okay, Zena, all good? So I will give you a form and then you are going to pick one of the 11 and we will make sure you attend it. How much per session? 17, Yasin? Yeah, I signed it somewhere. Uh, what, what did you say? I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't hear you. Can, you. can you say that again, Omar? Miss, what are the extra lessons? If there's two only classes, uh, the extra sessions are for extra support. We're going to solve questions. We're going to ask you questions. We're going to make sure you're doing well. All right. Any other questions? I felt like someone had their mic on. Omar, I think your mic is on. Do you have a question? Can I answer your question? What was it? I didn't hear it. Oh, I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. It's very, very quiet. Okay, Omar, please type your question. I cannot hear you at all. <laughs> okay. Is it optional? Yes, the office. Okay, so Ines has a really good question. Ines says, is the office hour optional? Yes, the office hours are optional. However, if I do not like your marks, it's not going to be optional. <laughs> I'm going to ask you to attend it. Does that make sense? All right. Okay, because we want to make sure everyone is doing well. Okay, guys, so... Again, welcome everyone. Here's your homework. First one is the worksheet. Second one is 1.1 1 .1 from 2019 to 2021. That's what you start with. And then if you have time, you do the older and then the older classified. Make sense, everyone? All good? Okay. So the first question I have for you guys, and I hope for you to uh, participate, please. Why is chemistry important? Why is it so important to study chemistry? Oh, Zena, thank you for having the camera on. Amazing. All right, why is this so important? And open the mic. And Ihab, I know you cannot open the mic because you're packing, right? You're traveling. So that's fine. Um, it All right. It helps you with your future careers. It helps you with your future career, of course, Judy. Judy, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to do? Because it's all around us. That's right, Omar. So it helps with future career. I love this answer because it's part of our daily life, of course, all the time. It's part of our daily life. What else? I mean, if you just go to your kitchen, everything is, is related to chemistry. Just look at your pots and pans. They're made of aluminum. Why aluminum? Because of the properties of aluminum. It has really good properties. We will study that in chapter 10. Uh, your forks and knives and spoons, they're made of stainless steel. Why stainless steel? I bet they tried something else, but it didn't work. And there are reasons why we use stainless steel. It explains reactions between different atoms and substances. Yes, 
you want to know, you want to be able to know what reaction can happen. You want to be able to predict those reactions because when you go to the lab, you want to be able to at least know what's going to happen in the lab, right? It expands your knowledge in how everything works. Yes, you have. That's right. Anything else? What else? To know more about our life, how we can make anything. Yes, Marwan, like we can uh, create things with chemicals, including even toys can be created with chemicals. But the one thing that we can create with chemicals, which I'm, you know, I'm very excited about is that you can make medications. You can make medications by mixing certain chemicals together in the lab. So that's another use of chemistry uh, is to make medications that can save people lives. I mean, 100 years ago, people didn't really live past their 40s or 50s or maximum 60s. And it's because of people got sick and, and they didn't get medications and people died early. But right now, we have a pretty good healthy life, right? Because exactly chickenpox was there um, and a lot of other viruses. Now we have vaccines. Vaccines are actually chemicals. People have created these chemicals in the lab and, you know, tested them on rats and pigs and, and animals and then started, you know, disseminating it to people. So typhoid, exactly. A lot of diseases are, are treated because we have medications medications is actually chemistry and a lot of other stuff i mean it can go all the way from who's who's interested in technology in general to, yeah nirvana is interested remes is interested in technology zayn is interested in technology omar is like me yes so guess what we cannot make iphones unless we understand what chemicals what material we can uh use to make those iphones how to make computers how to make computer chips i mean there's a lot of semiconductors inside of our computers and these are important for the computer to function rima is also interested in technology amazing who's interested in medicine who wants to go and study uh in medical college okay nirvana husni is interested yet is interested who else Sama is interested, Yumna, Rukaya, amazing, Omar, that's really good, because guess what, when you go to medical college, you have to understand chemistry, because chemistry is all over your body, guess what, your blood has a lot of chemicals, it has sodium ions, potassium ions, calcium ions, and all these ions, if, it, if they are too high, you're not gonna feel good. If they're too low, you're not gonna feel good. So it's really important to understand like what's that range that keeps people healthy and feeling good and feeling energetic, all right? So medical college, technology, pharmacy, even dentistry. I mean, if you're gonna fill somebody's tooth with something, you wanna know what that something is. What is it made from? What are the properties? Why do we use this, but not that? I mean, everything has to do with, with chemistry. I want to be a pharmacist like everyone is advising me to be a doctor. Jenna, do what you love. <laughs> That's my advice to everyone. Do what you love. Um, I mean, when I was your age, I was between chemistry and uh, engineering because I loved math so much. Uh, but then that chemistry teacher actually made me change my mind and I loved chemistry so much and I don't regret it. It's, it's just amazing. I want to learn how medicines are made. This is uh, something called drug design. This is a whole science on its own. You can study how drugs are uh, made and designed, and then you have to be really good in organic chemistry and reactions. So you can actually mix the right things in the right amounts so you can make that medication. And in chapter four, chapter four is called stoichiometry. You're gonna learn how to make calculations. Now calculations are very, very important because you wanna be able to mix the correct stuff together to make the right thing. Otherwise you're gonna have too much of one of them. What else? It's the hardest chapter for me. It's gonna be easy, don't worry. I mean, we're gonna do a lot of um, practice on chapter four, which is documentary, and you are going to be an expert, Jenna. So don't worry, yes. All right, so we have just discussed that even vaccines are made of chemicals. You have to understand chemistry if you're gonna be a doctor, if you're gonna be a pharmacist, if you're gonna be a dentist, if you're gonna be an engineer, if you're gonna be a technology person, like every profession requires some chemistry knowledge. And guess what? Even if you do not wanna do anything in life, and you just want to stay home, guess what? Even 
you know, chemicals at home, like cleaners at home, you want to, buy, you want to understand some chemistry because if you mix two cleaners and some chlorine is, is evolved or made in a reaction, then you know, because you have take, you know, you have studied IGCC chemistry that chlorine is toxic. So even if you don't want to do anything else in life and you just want to enjoy, you know, being a stay home mom or, or what have you, you still want to understand chemistry, right? Because there are cleaners at home. There are chemicals at home. And, and so you still want to understand um, what you're handling. All right. Anything else? Chapter four, stoichiometry. Yes. Not electrochemistry. It's stoichiometry, like moles, calculations. Yes. I want to know how it would be able to mechanical engineering. Here you go. It's called mechanical. Oh, mechanical is like mechanical. So engineering will also involve some chemistry, not much like medicine and pharmacy, but still. You should have a good basic knowledge. All right, my second question for you, chemistry is the study of what? Study of what? The elements. Life. Study of elements, study of chemicals. Chemicals. Yeah, it's a study of molecules, elements, exactly. It's, it's a study, it's basically the study of matter. Things that you can touch, you can see, it has a weight. I mean, some of them you cannot see because the air here is a matter, but we cannot see, it's transparent. But chemistry is the study of matter, things that you can weigh and things that actually occupy space. It takes up space. This is different than physics. So when you study physics, when you start your first session in IGCSE physics, your professor or your teacher will tell you that physics is the study of invisible things, things that you cannot see. It doesn't have a weight. You cannot measure a bunch of energy or a bunch of force, or you cannot measure the weight of acceleration or the weight of force or uh, waves. That's what, or... what is really... it? That's why I hate physics. I hate it because you don't see it. Exactly, it's all invisible things. You could, you you don't it's see. It's like gravity. confusing. How should I know something like? <laughs> I have no idea why is this like this way. Like? Well, the physics teacher will explain why it is so important for life. Physics physics is actually a fascinating subject. I think you will love it, and I hope Zena, you change your mind because physics is fascinating. But it but physics is is things that we don't touch and see. Chemistry is the study of matter, things that you can most of it you can actually touch and see, and some of it you cannot see because it's so tiny or transparent or invisible or what have you. But you can weigh it. It does have a mass, and it does occupy. Um, Last year was a disaster. I hated it. I hope you're talking about physics, but I mean, you're gonna love it. I mean, when you when once you start studying it and understanding how it's related to life, you're gonna love it. So that's chemistry. It's the study of matter. So question. This is a really really easy question. I hope everyone participates. What are the three states of matter? Solid, liquids, and gas. Solid, liquids, and, gas. and there's plasma. <laughs> <laughs> exactly three states of matter that uh, you guys have studied since grade two is solid liquid and gas so I have a question for you guys like when you were even two years old you could differentiate between a solid a liquid and a gas right you could tell even though you were a toddler so how could a two-year-old know that this is a solid this is a liquid this is a gas how I think if uh, you mean solids, solids, I guess it depends on pressure too. I mean, solids don't squish while liquids are, you know, like liquids I don't take the shape like, of, the, of the thing they, they are can, in, but solids like they have their own shape. Yes. So you guys have said really amazing things. It's the way it looks from the outside, like its shape. So something about the shape. All right. And you also said something about squishing it. So you cannot really squish a solid. You cannot, I cannot just, you know, keep squeezing my phone to make it smaller in size, right? That's not going to happen, right? So from the appearance, we can look at the shape of the solid, the liquid, the gas, and we can tell if it's a solid or a liquid or a gas. So solids have a very specific shape and it doesn't flow. You know, you cannot really change the shape of solid. It's it's like solid. That's why we call it solid, right? For liquids, they actually flow, right? I mean, the liquids flow. And what about the shape? Do they have a certain shape, liquids? No, they, they can take the shape of containers. Yes, 
Exactly. That's amazing. They take the shape of the container. If you put it in a bottle, it takes the shape of the bottle. If you put it in a thin, long jar, then it's going to be thin and long. If you put it in a, a wide uh, plate or a wide pot, then it's going to take that shape, right? So that's how we know that it's a liquid. It flows and it takes the shape of the container. What about gas? So gases, they don't have a shape. Again, they take the shape of the container. But the difference between gas and liquid is that gas fills the whole container. It goes all the way everywhere and it fills the whole container so we actually have a gas right in front of us what gas do you have right in front of you and you're breathing it oxygen <laughs> oxygen exactly so there's <laughs> oxygen there's nitrogen there's a bit of carbon dioxide just a little bit of carbon dioxide there's also a small amount of helium there's a small about amount of argon but this whole mixture is called what the, all these gases are called what Air, air, exactly. So air is an example of uh, several gases. They are mixed together. And if you notice, air doesn't just stay at the bottom of our room, right? It fills the whole room. Now, of course, it's transparent. We don't know. But we do know that it fills our whole room. Um, and you can breathe anywhere in your room. If you go to the corner, you can breathe oxygen. If you go to the bathroom, you can breathe oxygen. If you go to the kitchen, you can breathe. It's everywhere. Now, later next week, we will talk about diffusion and how the gas spreads everywhere, but not vacuum. So vacuum is basically like no gas, nothing, which is in outer space. There's nothing, right? No gas at all. So that's how we can tell if it's a solid liquid and gas from the outside. Side, a two-year-old can tell if it's a solid liquid and gas just from the shape. Now, there's another thing that differentiates solid liquid and gas, which is the volume of solid liquid and gas. Can you measure volume of a solid? Can you measure the volume of your phone, for example? Yes. <laughs> yeah, have you are so... Yeah. Yes, you can, right? In math, math O level, IGCSE, you're going to study how to measure the volume of any solid, right? It's the width times the height times the depth, right? What did you say? Yeah, Hanya, what did you say? Yeah, so you can measure the weight, the volume of a solid. It has a fixed volume. What about liquid? Through a measuring yes. cylinder? Measure the volume. The yes, weight. you can measure it. Yes, you can measure the volume of liquid. Now, my bottle here says that this water is 500 ml. Can it be anything else? It's 500 ml. Okay, I'm going to drink some water. So it does have a fixed volume. What about gas? Does it have a fixed volume? No. 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 Yeah, so gas takes shape of container. I'm just writing this. It takes shape of container, and then this one fills the whole container. All right, so the gas is a little bit tricky. So the volume of the gas actually depends on temperature and pressure, which we will talk about today, like in just a few minutes. And in the AS chemistry, you will study that as the temperature increases, the volume of the gas actually increases. Okay, so that was in regards to the volume. Now, what we have just studied here is how are solid, liquid, and gases, uh, how do they look like from the outside? But what is also important for us chemists is to understand how solid, liquid, and gas are different from the inside, okay? So from the inside, we're going to look at the particles and things that we cannot see with our eyes, things that we can only see using a sophisticated microscope. So solids and liquids and gases are made like, okay, this is a piece of paper. If I take just a small amount here with my hand and I have a little bit of a piece of paper here, how many particles are there in this one speck of paper? How many particles do you think? Can you just guess? A particle that I can barely see with my eyes. No. Ahmed. Ahmed. <laughs> okay. How, uh, what are, Marwan, you, you're unmuted. Go ahead. Hello? You want to answer this? Yes, go ahead. 
exactly that's right zena there's a lot of Rima, Ihab, that's right. A lot of particles. I mean, I can barely see it with my eyes, but guess what? There's hundreds and thousands and millions of particles in this one small speck. So those are called particles. Now in chapter one, I'm going to allow you guys to just say particles. However, later in chapter three, we're going to... Um, we're going to know that actually there are several types of particles. Do you guys know? I mean, I'm going to explain this in chapter three, but does anybody know what particles are? What, ty what types of particles are? Rima, that's right. So particles could be ions. ions. Exactly. They could be atoms molecules atoms. or they could be electrons. atoms. That's right. So, and then the atoms will have protons and electrons. We're going to study that in chapter three. So all particles are either atoms or molecules or ions. And we're going to study the differences between like the atoms, ions, and, and molecules in chapter three. So those are particles. So in solid, again, here's solid, liquid, and gas. So how do the particles how are particles you know arranged or what's the structure of of the solid and solid particles the particles together. are vibrate in a fixed position yeah and exactly. they are regular arrangements they have regular range. awesome Ragda. awesome hania awesome move, they, they don't move they vibrate they, that's right they, they yes that's right so i have heard several things however on the exam, and guess what? This is a very easy chapter, but you get asked on the exam. And if you do get asked on the exam on this chapter, on this lesson, these are this is a gift from the examiner. So we're gonna accept the gift happily. One question that may uh, that they may ask on the exam is to describe the separation of particles in solids. So when they ask about separation, do you talk about movement? Do you talk about vibration? No, you talk about separation. So how are particles separated, Yarima? Can you open the mic? Uh, boiling. No, how are they how are they separated from each other? Not how we can separate. Yes, we can separate it from, from each other by melting and boiling, but in a solid state, how are particles separated? But if, but if it's a solid, then how are the particles meant to be separated since they are exactly. tightly packed? Exactly. Uh, they are forces magnetic forces and we're going to talk about forces in a second in solid they are tightly packed so if the examiner asks you how are particles separated in solid form you're going to say tightly packed remiss how are particles separated in liquid remiss they are kind of loose. They're not really. Yeah, they're not tight. They are loosely packed. Great answer. Abdurrahman, how are particles separated in gas? I know there's several Abdurrahmans. Any of you? Abdurrahman Shaban, Abdurrahman Iheb. There's a third Abdurrahman also. They are exactly Nasr Ahmed. Thank you, Anas. Thank you. Shahinda, that's right. Yes, they are far apart. They are separate, really separated from each other. They are far apart. There's a very big distance between each particle. So if the examiner asks you to draw the structure of solid, liquid, and gas, that's how you are going to draw the structure of solid. Particles are tightly packed. They are exactly next to each other. They form layers. They are regular. In liquid, they're going to look like this. They, they may be touching but they are loosely packed. They're not tightly packed. And then in gas, you're going to draw particles that are totally far from each other. Sounds good, everyone? So that was in regards to separation. Very common question on exam. The other thing is they can ask you about arrangements. So if they ask about arrangement, what do you say? What's the keyword that Cambridge is expecting? LA. Uh, regular? What you, regular arrangement? Regular, exactly. So when they talk about arrangement, they are basically asking you if it's regular or irregular. So solids are all regular. Liquids and gases uh, liquid are and irregular or random. They are like, you know, they don't have a, a specific place to stay and they are random. Gas and then gas is also random. Now, I have a question for you. 
if the examiner says that we would like to compare one centimeter cube of a solid, a very specific volume of solid, and one centimeter cube of a liquid and one centimeter cube of a gas, specific volume, equal volume of solid, liquid, and gas, which state will have more particles? That was a tricky question on IGCSE. What do you guys think? Rima, Dana, Rimes, Heb, anyone? The gas? Which, which one will have more particles? Now, if we are comparing exactly the same volume, one centimeter, one centimeter, and one centimeter cube. It's because they're tight oh, so it can fit in more. Solid. Solid. Exactly. So look oh, at this. Solid. solid. Solid will have the most particles because it's tightly packed. So it fits a lot of particles. In liquid, you know, they're loosely packed. So it's not going to fit that many particles. Uh, I think I drew maybe 16 particles in solid. I think I drew maybe uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven particles here. But in gas, I can only fit three particles because particles are all over the place. They're so far from each other. And that was a question that was in, in recent years in the Cambridge exam. Is it easy? Do you, do you feel like exams are easy? That was one of the hardest ones. I mean, that's a question that students ask me. Like they're like, "Ooh, well, which one? Which one would have more particles?" Okay, so that's one question. The other tricky question uh, that appeared on the exams was if, for example, this was water. Oops, I was going to ask you guys what's the formula of water, but I wrote it. It's okay. And this was also water, but in liquid form. And this was water in gas form. And water is one of those few chemicals that we actually see in our daily life in all three states, right? In the freezer, it's in the solid state. In the fridge or at room temperature, it's in the liquid state. And there's actually water vapor that we breathe. You know, it's, it's all over. And we breathe out water vapor too. So if water if we're comparing water in solid liquid and gas do you think exactly humidity which is pretty high in a country for example like uae it's pretty humid like i i was born and, and raised in uae and uh i started wearing glasses pretty early and when i went out from a cold room to uh, uh to the to the outside my glasses were all <laughs> yeah Saudi Arabia same thing I bet Kuwait and and Qatar the same thing it's real yeah all right so if we're comparing solid liquid and gas water in each case do you think the size of the particle would be different in solid liquid and gas do they have equal yeah. size no, go ahead yes no, they, they will the size exactly the she said yes it's equal. equal. Exactly. They're equal size. I, I thought, no, she said yes, they would have. That's why I thought she's like, exactly. Yeah, size, Are have. you a head sister? <laughs> All right. So, yes, they are equal. Why? Because in solid, it's H2O. There are three atoms, two hydrogens and one oxygen. In liquid, it's also three atoms. And in gas, it. it. it's also three atoms. Um, uh, no, no, I'm talking about the size of the particle, no, not the size of the, the whole thing. Yes, sister. They can't. Yeah. They can't expand. No, the, the, uh, so yet I was talking about the size of the particle itself and not the whole thing, not, not the whole, I mean, this is millions of particles, right? So I was just talking about the size of one particle. So size of the particles are the same. It doesn't magically become four atoms or five atoms or six atoms when it becomes gas, right? It's always three atoms. Is it easy? Everyone following? Yes, miss. Awesome. Awesome. Yes. Okay. So uh, that was another question that also appeared in IGCSE IGC exam. Now, you guys will find the homework extremely easy because those are the two questions that actually students struggled with and we've just discussed them and you guys are amazing all right so the next thing that examiners can ask about is the motion of particles how particles move the movement of particles so can who wants to do this dana dana can you tell me how to describe the movement and somebody I actually mentioned it a few minutes ago, the movement of solid particles. How do solid particles move? How do you describe the motion? Dana. Exactly, Shahinda, Judy, Yusuf, Rukaya. That's amazing. Yasin, that's right. Matab. Yes, that's right. Rima. Okay, so in solid, they only vibrate. Remiss, why didn't you answer? 
where are you? <laughs> so in solid, they only vibrate. They only do this. They don't move. Okay. So in liquid, what about liquid? Do they move or they vibrate? They, they slide. They slide past each other. Yes, exactly. They move. Do they move slowly or fast? Slowly. slowly. They move slowly and they no. slide over each other. What about gas? Must they slide over each other to accommodate the shape of the uh, container, right? Uh, they okay, move yes. Yeah. Um, what about what about uh, gas? They both move they, slowly or fast? Miss quickly, they're fast. 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 They fast. are fast. Exactly, they move they're really, really fast. Random. And random, we're going to talk about, I mean, random is in regards to the arrangement. So if they ask about the arrangement, you're going to say random. If they ask about the movement, then you don't say random, you say fast. Fast and random. Yeah, fast. Okay, so uh, I think go you ahead. Also say chaotic. Chaotic, uh huh. Like they're all over the place. Now, solid, liquids, and gas actually remind me of people. All right. So, do you think solids are more like kids, children, or more like adults? Adults. Oh. Adults, right? They are yeah. kind of more composed. Exactly. Like we sit on our chairs, we sit on our computers, we and we don't move very much. Right? Yeah. So, solids are more like adults. What about liquid? Teenagers are like yeah. teenagers. Exactly. <laughs> you guys. You guys, like when you go to the mall, how do you move? Like you move slowly and you're randomly moving with your friends and you're sliding over each other, right? Like that's with teens, okay? So uh, uh, adults or old people and teens are like liquid. They're moving slowly. What about gas? Gas is similar to what? Little toddlers. Little toddlers. Like, exactly. they're like all over the place. They don't stay in one place. They all, exactly, they they're all over the place. The place. They're so fast. They're random. Like I don't. I, I never they're feel like they so have like, a purpose. Exactly. They're so chaotic. So that's exactly how gas behave. So that was one. Uh, one question you, you you may get in the exam is the motion. Now, motion or movement is actually related to the energy of particles with solid that are kind of like adults. Do you think it has a lot of energy or yes, little? They have little energy. Little, the energy increases with the with the state of matter. Exactly, the energy increases with state of matter. Solids are like adults; they're they're lazy. Now, I have to say, I'm an exception, <laughs> so I'm not really lazy. But uh, solids are uh, like adults; they don't have much energy, and that's why they only vibrate. They don't move very much. What about liquids? This, like, yes, they do have energy, but not a lot of energy. energy. Exactly, not much. Yeah. Not, yeah, like they do have some so, energy and they're they actually just don't able like to spending it. Yeah, exactly. What about gas? Also they have a lot of energy. A lot of energy. Exactly. They have a lot of energy. Those are the toddlers with a lot of energy. Now, question. If you give a toddler sugar or chocolate or candy, what happens? They, they will become hyperactive. <laughs> they will <laughs> even faster right so in regards so, to particles what do oh, you that's give like providing particles? you provide heat, or heat provide heat exactly heat is like sugar it's like candy the more the heat the more energy they have and the faster they move if it's solid they vibrate faster if it's liquid or gas they move faster okay just like kids you give them sugar oh my god good luck catching them they are all over the place all right, so the next thing that examiners may ask you about is the forces of, of energy, forces of attraction, I mean, forces of attraction between particles. So in solid, you know they are tightly packed, right? So, so it's a strong force think? of attraction. Exactly, because they are tightly packed and they're so close to each other, they have strong forces of attraction between those two particles. The, the particles are so attached to each other, they don't want to move away from each other. There's one way to force them away. And what is that way? Melting it. Melting, melting it or adding heat. 
adding heat, adding energy this way, you can actually overcome those forces. And we will talk about that the next lesson, which is kinetic energy. What about liquid? How are, how do you describe the uh, attractive forces? Less the weak attracts the force. I mean, there are, yeah. there are, yeah, there are some attraction forces we, keeping uh, those. No, they're strong, but they're not as strong as solid. What about gas? Very, very weak. Yeah, exactly. No, there no force. There's almost no force. I'm gonna put it here in green because it's it's like very, very weak. So there's very, very weak forces of attraction between particles in gas. Easy. Okay. So if you get questions like that in the exam, can you just write it down? You don't guys need to memorize it or anything, right? So easy. All right. So last um, this, yes, go ahead. I have a question. Uh, if we wrote there is no attraction at all, will it be different? Or we wrote there's a little bit of attraction? No, that's fine. That's fine. You can say no attraction. Yeah, because it's negligible. It's almost it's almost zero. That's a very good question. Yes, go ahead. Is it possible to say little or no attraction? Yes, you can say little or no attraction. Yeah. In liquids or in gas? Gas. No, liquid, there is attraction. Yes, there's attraction in liquid. Any other question? You guys are awesome. I'm so excited for you. This class is going to be easy. <laughs> All right. So lastly is compressibility. Can you compress a solid? Remiss, what do you think? Can you compress a solid? No. 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 no, you no. cannot. I mean, the particles Miss, are Miss, what if it depends? Miss, what if it depends on its uh, material? Like the material it's made of? Oh, you're talking about other material like semi-solids, sponge, like other stuff that can actually be squished. And there are reasons why it can be squished, but we're not gonna talk about this in all level. Um, in other stages, maybe in AS or A level, you will talk about, like you will study more about uh, those things. What about liquid? Slightly compressed? Yes. Very, yes, very, 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 very slightly, very like. slightly. Because the particles are already touching. Uh, and yeah, they do have some room to move around, but not really. There's not much space. So actually, almost not compressible. Okay, we're just going to say no. Okay, what about gas? Yeah, it's compressed. Easily, easily compressed. Why? Why? Because, because there's the barely any particles between the most. They're far apart. Exactly. Because have weak Look at the of the to move because of the weak. How are they separated? Are particles separated enough? Yeah, because yeah, they are. They are very separated. They are very far from each other. And so, look at the distance. There's a large distance between particles. So, what you can do is you can just bring them close together. Question for you guys: How is this useful in our everyday life? Why is it so good that we can compress gases? Why is it? Which they because you inhale you inhale a gas and you don't want it to be a solid right no you don't want to inhale a solid that's one thing what else yeah that's right what else stronger the attraction the harder to compress of course you said that's right yeah hospitals that's right uh, for example so, if you a sport and while running you don't want the air to push you like back they have a like a strong force and that's why it needs to be in a gas form because, yeah, you don't want to inhale any other form of, of state of matter. So a lot of people said hospitals. What do you guys mean by hospitals? Which is correct, of course. I mean, yes, for sure you want, don't want gas to be like a solid thing so that when you smell it, it doesn't get inside you and you something but, happens but to the you. Fact, but the fact that it's compressible, why is this helpful? So then, so that you can uh, get the oxygen or the the gas you need inside your body, so that exactly. it can move inside your or, inside no, you in the cells and can move freely inside you. Each organ can get their oxygen, or and then you get out the carbon dioxide like that. And Ied, what do you think about that? Uh, so we can hold more oxygen in per container and spend less money. That's right. That's right. If you want to store oxygen in the hospital, do you want to store it in? buildings and buildings and buildings and buildings of oxygen or do you want to compress them into a small container so you can have a lot of access to oxygen that doesn't take much space right so what we do is we compress oxygen in oxygen 
cylinders. And in chapter 11, we will study about the use of those oxygen cylinders. We use them for hospitals. We use them for what else? Where do we take those oxygen tanks? Diving. Diving. You have exactly. Thank you, Hania. Where, where else? And uh, for space oh, with astronauts. Space. Exactly. Oh, Omar, Yusuf, uh, for helium yes, balloons. Space. But, so you guys for talked helium, about yeah. mountains and outer space. So of course, if you want to go to the outer space, you need oxygen, right? So you're not going to take a whole uh, lot of cylinders. You want to take a cylinder with compressed oxygen. The other thing is uh, mountains and climbing mountains where there's less oxygen in the higher altitude. I actually live in a place that has, that we are at, I think we are like 6,000 feet above the altitude. So some people who go and climb mountains, they actually need oxygen uh, cylinders. So there are many uses of compressing the gas. So it's actually very useful to be able to compress gas. And it's the only state of matter that can be compressed. Now in IGCC- But exam, like, I didn't get it. We don't need gas to be compressed. So, Zena, if you want to operate a hospital, okay, and you want to have access to oxygen, right, because your patients will need oxygen, how do, would you like to store them? Do you want to store them at regular volumes or you want to store them in as little space as possible? Which way? Okay, yeah, yeah. I yeah, guess. yeah you, want to, you want to store them in a small space because you don't want to um, occupy a space, lot of room, right? And, like, want to add more and more. Yes, okay. Yeah, exactly. Hospital rooms are expensive. You don't want to fill them all with oxygen tanks. You want to fill only one room with 100, 200 oxygen tanks that has a lot of oxygen compressed in it. So lots and lots of molecules in a small space. So if it's uh, at regular pressure, it's going to look like this. So this is oxygen, for example. If you want to compress it because you own a hospital, you want to save money, you want to have a lot of oxygen in your hospital, then you're going to compress it in a small space like that. Notice that I only drew three particles here and three particles there. So question, what's the difference between container A and container B? There's a term, a scientific term. What is it? The particles are more compressed in container B. Particles, and they're exactly. The closer particles together. are compressed oh. in container B. Now, when a gas is compressed, we give it a name. We call it something. It has high... Pressure. 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 Exactly. Look at you guys. Awesome. Okay. Yes. They do have high pressure. So how do questions come in the exam? Why does in decreasing volume increases pressure? That's how questions come in the exam. And it's worth two points. How do you answer this question? What do you say? Miss, as the volume increases, pressure decreases. What when volume decreases, pressure so increases, or the opposite? Hania, the opposite is true. If you increase the volume, the pressure decreases. So when the examiner asks you why decreasing volume increases pressure, you're going to say that particles particles do what in B container yeah, B? They collide with each other, each other and the walls of the container. Exactly, they get closer to each other. And then when they get closer to each other, what happens? Someone said, yeah, who was it? Yeah, they collide. They collide more frequently, exactly. So they get closer to each other. And then when they close, when they get closer to each other, I mean, look at this particle, particle for example, it needs to travel uh, quite a big distance to hit the wall. But this one, only travels a very short distance to hit the wall. So which one will hit, hit the wall more frequently? B. B. Container B. 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 Exactly. B is going to be like boom, 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 right? So when there's this a lot of collision, we call it high pressure. So particles get closer to each other. Therefore, they collide. They collide more frequently, more frequently. So we call this high pressure. So it's worth two points. One point to say that they got closer to each other. The other point is to say that they collide more frequently. Make sense? Easy? I just, I mean, Cambridge exams are so easy. That's how you get the question. That's how you answer the question. The second scenario, so this is scenario number one, okay? The second scenario is if you have the same exact volume, 
the same exact pressure, the same exact number of particles, I'm sorry, not pressure, the same exact number of particles. And this is container A, this is container B. Container A is kind of cold, maybe like 20 or less degrees C. Container B is like 80 degrees C. It's hotter. What's the difference? We just talked about it. The pressure, the when pressure in container B will be higher. Yes, Hania, yeah, that's right. A will collide less often. Yes, Hamza, that's also right. Anas, what did you say? Yes. Yeah. Omar. As they, they will have gained kinetic energy and uh, move faster, so they would collide exactly. more often. And so it's energy. like giving a child a piece of candy. What they do is at lower temperature, they're moving, but they're kind of like, you know, moving at a good speed. But then in container B, they are moving. Man, they are fast. So when they're fast, what do you think about the collision? It increases. It increases, mm -hmm. exactly. So uh, mm -hmm. when you increase temperature, particles move, with the ball increases move, with the temperature. Exactly. Particles move faster and therefore they collide more frequently. So the two keywords, the two important keywords that you have to say on the exam is they move faster, they gain kinetic energy, they gain energy, they move faster, they oh collide God. more frequently. And therefore, if they collide with the wall more frequently, what happens to the pressure? Increase. Increase, exactly. The pressure increases, okay? Everyone doing well so far? That's another type of question that you may get in the exam, all right? Okay. So, yes. so the number of collisions per second is per proportional second. to the temperature. It's exactly. proportional. Exactly, proportional to temperature. What about volume? Is it proportional to volume or inversely proportional to volume? Inversely proportional. Inversely proportional. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. Look at you guys. Okay, question. The fact that when we increase temperature, pressure increases, has an application at home. Do you guys know what this application is? At home. So at home, specifically in your kitchen, you can actually increase the pressure, the increase the pressure by increasing temperature. Cooking, yes, seen that's right. So this is called something. It's called pressure cooker, okay? So here's your stove, here's your uh, flame, and you're cooking something, okay? And uh, it has gas inside, of course, because, you know, water is evaporating, there's air. And what the manufacturer did is they, they made sure that this pot is tightly closed, like it doesn't allow the air to go out. So what happens to the particles inside? They keep gaining energy, gaining energy, gaining energy. And therefore, they keep moving fast and faster and faster. So what happens to the air inside this pot? The pressure. What happens to the pressure? It pressure increases. 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 Exactly. Pressure increases. Why is this good? Why, why do we do that? Why in the world do we want to cook at high pressure? So that the meal can cooking. be cooked faster? Exactly. The meal so it should be well faster. done. It's going to be well done. We especially do this for meat, right? So yes. it's going to be fast. It's going to be efficient. It's going to be cooked better. And, and moms love it, right? So um, now question. When you think you are done cooking, do you want to open that lid right away? Yes. No. No. Because no, no. You, you, you need to take so, it off the pressure cooker and just make it rest. So like, like, yeah, if you open it right away, I mean, remember, this is under high pressure. The particles are like moving very, very, very fast. And if you open the lid, what do you think the particles are going to do? They're going to just. They're going to escape to the air because hot air, hot air is less dense than cold air. It, and that's one another reason which we will study in physics, of course. Now, imagine if you have a room with 10 kids or, or something. And they are under high pressure. They just ate sugar and they are moving really, really, really fast. And you suddenly open the door of this room. What's going to happen? <laughs> They're going to burst yeah, out of it. Yeah. Exactly. They're going to burst out of the door, right? It's the same thing with cooking. And that's why your mom will always tell you, hey, no matter how much you're hungry, leave that thing to cool down first before opening the lid, right? Miss, usually the lids have like a lock or something to hold yes. the pot in by itself. Yes, there's a safety feature that's very smart, Hanya. Thank you very much. There's a safety feature for what's, those what, uh, pots because not everyone. Go ahead, Zena. What did you say? Open. What like is it? What, what will go wrong if I open the lid? 
the, the gas will go up quickly. It will be so eager to go out. And if it touches your hand, what's going to happen? Remember, this is this is a meal that is at uh, 110 degrees C. So people can get burned. I actually had done this before when I was a teen. I opened a, a hot thing and, and it came to my hand and it, yeah, the gas, the hot gas will come to your skin. So it's not good. Okay. All right, question. Why do the, it's a very separate question, but it has something related to pressure. Why, when you uh, fill a balloon with air, when you blow a balloon, why does it burst at one point? Because you add lots There's of- There's too much pressure and it explodes. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. So this is a balloon with just few particles. This is another balloon that you have decided to put more and more and more and more gas particles so what happens here there's a lot of gas particles what do you think about the collision with the wall it's too it's much too Very much frequent. collision exactly uh -huh. too much collision so what do you think about the pressure is it more in balloon a or more in balloon b balloon b, <laughs> balloon b. exactly the pressure is so high so if the elastic doesn't take it anymore it's gonna burst so i have one Last question for you guys, and I'm pretty sure you guys are going to get it. It's a little bit of a tricky question. Um, if you have a car, and if you guys know, those tires need to be under high pressure, okay? Those tires need to be under high pressure so that the wheel will go smoothly on the road. Now, when the temperature is really cold in the winter, um, I sometimes have as cold as negative 25 degrees C. It's pretty cold. In the winter, I have to take my car to the gas station and fill it with more air. Why? Why do I have to fill those tires with Thank more you. air in the Be cold? To, to make sure the pressure doesn't decrease. So more collisions could happen. Exactly. Okay, so you guys mentioned that in the cold temperature, what do you think happens to the particle's kinetic energy? In decrease or increase? Decrease. 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 They're not exactly. So they're, yeah, exactly. So the kinetic energy decreases. I mean, it's cold. So those particles are becoming lazier. They don't have much sugar. I mean, they don't have much heat. They don't have much yes. energy. So they start moving slower and slower. So when they move slower, what do you think happens to the collision? It decreases. 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 Less frequent collision. They don't collide with the wall of the tire very often. So this means that the pressure, what happens to the pressure? Decreases. Uh, pressure Sorry. decreases Degrees. and actually if you have ever drove a car with low pressure in the tires you know something is wrong i once happened i once had this happen to me and i was like the car is not sounding good it feels like it's it's not running well and lo and behold it won't you the might gas get into an accident due to this exactly because like your your tire is not doing well so you actually have to go to the gas station and fill it with more air so that's why in cold temperatures we go to the gas station and we put more air into those tires you may have noticed this in your bicycle if it's too cold you feel like mm, those tires are not doing very well i have to go to the gas station all right, so that was my last question for you. No, actually, I do have one last question before we go. Yeah, one last one. Okay, don't worry. We're almost done. What are three ways to increase pressure? What are three ways to increase pressure? Increase uh, temperature. Increase volume. Yeah, volume. Have a tighter space. Uh, seeing amounts of gas inside the uh, uh, container. Heat. Yeah, Zina, Hania, Marwan. Awesome. You guys look at you. Who else? What do you guys think? Um, I, I think yes. increase the quantity of the and increasing the temperature. That's and right. Increasing the so, volume. Wonderful. Look at you, Ennis. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So one way to do it is increase the amount of gas. Just add more gas. Amount of gas. Okay. So add more, just like the tire example, okay? So example, the tire example, you just add more gas. That's one way. The other way is to increase the temperature. And what is the daily life example that we do at home? The cooking. The cooking, exactly. Example is the pressure cooking, the pressure cook or the pressure cooker. Pressure cook. 
and and that's where you increase temperature which increases pressure which makes the food cook better and faster and the third scenario or third example is by decreasing the Decrease volume the, container. the volume have you ever decreased the volume at home is it possible to do at home it's actually not very easy but do you guys have you guys seen a, a, a syringe at home maybe a medicine syringe yes exactly so actually if you close the syringe from both like from that outer side and you try to squish it if you are strong enough you can actually squish it and decrease the volume which actually increases the pressure so an example here is a gas syringe okay so guys i am done uh this is this is our class here is your homework which is the worksheet and everything related to 1.1 1 .1. um is my screen still sharing? All from oh, the website awesome. everything is on the website now if you need help with yes. the website i can help you on wednesday i can help you on wednesday uh, uh in the office hours i can help you with navigate the website if you need any help and um one thing maybe i can actually stop the share here let me stop the share. Okay, so one last thing that I would love to do by the end of each session is get some feedback from you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a link to a form. And I want you to go to that form, write your name. And I want you to write something useful that you have learned today. How does that sound? You guys can do it. Okay. I want to really see amazing, amazing. Um, I want to call it reflections. So if you can tell me what you learned today, how useful it was today, something new, something emphasized, something interesting that you have learned today. Orima, I love you too. Thank you so much. So go to this link that, that I have just posted here on the chat, on the, uh, on the Zoom chat. Go to this link and write like what insights you got today. Okay, sounds good? So organized, Jenna, thank you so much. Yes, I hope it's as organized as possible. I think you will find that the website is pretty user-friendly. However, if you have any trouble with the website, please let me know, I'm happy to help you. Tomorrow, there are two office hours. Wednesday, you have the office hour with me. Please try to attend um, as much as you can. Um, Miss Marie, the best course. Oh, yeah, you are so awesome. Look at you. Can you please send the link of the website? The link of the website. Miss Dina, can you share the link of the website? Can you please post the link of the website? The class timings, Jenna, Monday and Thursday, 30 p.m. The extra ones are throughout the week. We have one that I personally offer on Wednesday at 7 p.m. Cairo. And there are 11 other sessions that you can join. You just join one of them. You don't have to join more. Uh, you can join more if you want. But, but one, I think, is more than enough. Will you post the handwritten notes? Yes, Nurhen, I will. I will post it on the on the parents group. Or, I'm sorry, on the students group, the WhatsApp group. Nurhen, very good question. Where do I watch the recording? On the website. It's going to be on the website. Um, class timing, I entered that. Where do I go to get the lessons? On the website, Hamza. When do you post? Uh, I will post it. Yes. Watch the recording. Yes, definitely watch the recording. This one will be on the YouTube. Everything else will be on the website. How do I join the website? Ms. Dina, can you put the link to the form? Please fill out the form. Uh, and so that Ms. Dina can put you on the website, uh, on the WhatsApp group. Ms. Dina, can you put the link to the form? Thank you so much. Ms. Dina is amazing, amazing. Everybody on the team is, of course, very uh helpful and uh you guys can text us anytime you can text me anytime i wanted to ask where i can find the recording of the meeting this one this one will be available on the website and on youtube everything else will be available on the website you can watch it anytime of course i would like you to watch it as many times as possible so you can learn uh so hamza do you see that link that Ms. dina just posted that's where you uh, reserve your spot and she's gonna add you to the parents group. Where can I find the schedule of this year? Uh, you mean the, the um, I can send it to you also on the WhatsApp. It's Monday and Thursday and uh, we will communicate through the WhatsApp group, which country timings are the session. So it's 5.30 Cairo, 6.30 Saudi Arabia, Qatar and Kuwait, 7.30 
uh, 7.30 UAE time. Temushi, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing your name correct. No, I don't do one-on-one. -on -one. I just have very little time. However, if you have questions, feel free to ask me on the WhatsApp. I answer all the WhatsApp questions. I don't go to sleep until all my WhatsApp questions are answered. So don't worry about it. I do give individual, very good individual attention to everyone. Uh, please send the presentation to the group. How did it even? For sure. Um, the one from uh, link for okay. Are you Cambridge? This group is for Cambridge. Now, if you guys want a deck sale on the website, there is um there is a classified for a deck sale. And if you also want to contact me, I can recommend some Edexcel teachers. They are amazing. Now, the Edexcel syllabus is exactly the same as the Cambridge syllabus. Edexcel only has two additional topics, very small, half a page extra topics. So Edexcel is very similar and um, yeah, very similar to Cambridge. But this group is for Cambridge. OK, if you are Edexcel, please contact me. I have recommendations for you. OK, anything else, guys? You guys have been amazing. Look at you. Yeah, you answer great. You have great knowledge. You have amazing information. I will see you. Uh, perhaps some of you will join tomorrow's uh, uh, office hours, and I will see you Wednesday for office hours, and I will see you Thursday for our 1.2, which is kinetic, uh, kinetic energy, kinetic theory. Anything else, guys? And you do have a homework, yes. Yes, we will correct them. Please submit it by Wednesday. Wednesday is the last day. No late submissions. All right, Jenna, you have a great day too. Thank you, Iyad. Thank you, Abdurrahman. Thank you, Abdurrahman Shaban. Adham Khalid. Ahmed Dio. Ahmed Mohammed. Ahmed Timur. Um, the other Ahmed. <laughs> Akram. Ale. Amani. Thank you, Anas. Thank you, Anas Timur. Are you? You're not Basim's brother, right? There's Anna's brother, uh, his, uh, Besson's brother. His name is also Anna's. Arwa, thank you, Arwa. Thank you, Basan. Thank you, Bilal. Thank you, Iheb, Muhammad. Thank you, Iyad. Thank you, Farah. Habiba Ahmed, very nice to see you today, Habiba. Thank you, Hamza. Thank you, Islam. Thank you, Jana, Judy, Kiralas, Lujain, Lujain Ibrahim, Mahmoud, Manel, Mark, Marwan, Maya, Muhammad. Muhammad Abdul Khalil, Muhammad Ahmed Khalil, Muhammad Mahmoud, Muhannad, thank you, Muhannad, thank you, Rima, thank you, Musab, thank you, Nirvana Husni, thank you, Noor, thank you, Omar, thank you, Ryan, thank you, Ruqayya, Sahar, Sama, Sara, Shahd, Shawgi, Tamushi, I hope I'm, I'm saying it correctly. Anna says, How old I am? I am 40. <laughs> I am old. <laughs> But I act like young people. <laughs> Thanks for the enjoyment. You are welcome. Uh, oh, Rima, you are so sweet, Rima. <laughs> Thank you, Omar. Very nice to see you on the camera. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry for the interruption, but like, what about the homework? Like, yes. what one, should I do? I didn't one get point it. Worksheet 1.1. 1. 1. Go to the website. Go to 1.1. 1. 1. Uh, it, 1.1 is free, so you can actually get this homework for free and solve the, the worksheet, which is just two pages, and solve the classified from 2019 to 2021, and then solve the older ones. They are all on the website. If you can watch this, Miss, I think you joined a little bit. Yes, go ahead. Uh, Miss uh, 1.1, it's not on the outside, just from 1.2. So scroll down a little bit. Scroll down more and more and just load more courses and it's there. It's there. And I can send you where can I get the website from? I'll send you the link. Can you contact me on WhatsApp and I will send you the link? Okay, don't worry. Uh, after we finish it, where can we send it? You make it all in one PDF document and you send it to Ms. Dina. Okay. And then she will give it back to you with the feedback and corrections. All right. Yeah, she asked about the, the YouTube channel. What's the language so that I can re really see the recording? Uh, you want the uh, YouTube um, YouTube link? Ms. Dina, do you have the YouTube channel link? Can you please post it? Yes, Dina just posted it right now. Thank you so much, Ms. Dina. Very helpful. Anything else, guys? Thank you, Wad. I love your name. Thank you, Yusuf. Yusuf, uh, the other Yusuf, there's three Yusuf. Thank you, Zainab, got it. Thank you, Imran. Did I miss anyone? If you have questions, do who we do? You can ask me, Hamza. You can ask Ms. Dina. You can ask anyone. 
you are welcome Ia. thank you so much you have a wonderful monday enjoy your day watch the recording contact me if you have any questions and i will see you uh tomorrow perhaps if you choose to attend office hours tuesday or i will see you wednesday all right guys bye have a good day